For those of you who don't follow politics, this may not be a story for you, but I'm willing to bet you'll probably still get something from it anyway. Now, for some reason, President Trump's nomination of Judge Brett M. Kavanaugh for Supreme Court really stuck out to me. For those who don't already know, really quickly, there has been a confirmation process going on for a Supreme Court justice of which Brett Kavanaugh, currently a judge for the United States Court of Appeals, has been at the center of. That being said, something tells me that had Trump not been the one to nominate this gentleman, the political debacle that is now would probably never have been, especially since the 2016 elections was essentially the genesis of a resist Trump movement, and because Kavanaugh was picked by Trump, inherently you have resistance. But that resistance took a tragic turn when it appeared opposition used sexual misconduct allegations as means to a political end. So let me try to set a stage. In July, California Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein received a letter detailing an allegation of unwanted sexual advances perpetrated by Brett Kavanaugh. Now, the author of that letter was kept anonymous, and the content was basically kept under wraps until just about a week before one of the key vetting processes for Brett were to move forward. After the allegation was made public, there were calls for the accuser to come forward, and questions were raised as to why Feinstein remained almost strategically silent for so long. The accuser, Dr. Blaisley Ford, did come forward, and Feinstein maintains she kept things quiet at the request of Ms. Ford. Now, after Ford went public, things were better understood. Ford was accusing Kavanaugh of forcing himself on her at a party they both been drinking at as teenagers almost four decades ago. Now, she does admit to not being able to recall the time, date, or place the party took place, but is convinced it was attempted rape. Immediately, parallels started being made from the media and people in the peripheral of this to the 1991 Senate Judiciary Committee of Anita Hill versus Clarence Thomas. I'll leave links in the description below for more explanation on that. But a major difference is that back then, it was alleged multiple episodes as sober adults just years before the committee when it was still fresh compared to one alleged episode as intoxicated teens at a party nearly 40 years ago. However, without having to look at this too closely, certain implications began to arise. Some of the fundamental flaws with the Me Too movement has been the abuse of sexual allegations and what defines them. An individual can have their life ruined or character permanently tarnished even after allegations are proved false. The problem here is that if Brett is derailed, it no doubt begins to set a precedent that simply vaguely implying sexual misintent, no matter the context or how long ago, is a valid political tactic. Now, before I go on, if you want to know more about the story in depth and not just the cliff notes, I always leave links in the description. And to be clear, for the keyboard warriors, this is not an attack or endorsement for Brett, nor is it an attack or an endorsement for Miss Ford. My intent is to get you to see the bigger picture. By sensationalizing certain issues the way the media has been, it opens the doors to normalization of bellicose circusry where there should be seriousness. 42,000 pages of documents that we have not had an opportunity to review or read or analyze. You are out, you're out of order. I'll proceed. We cannot possibly move forward, Mr. Chairman, I extend this a hearing. very warm welcome we to Judge Kavanaugh. We have not been given Kavanaugh. an opportunity to have a meaningful his wife, hearing Ashley. on this. Mr. Chairman, if, if we cannot be recognized, I move to adjourn. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. We have been denied real access to the documents we need. What is the rush? What, what are we trying to hide by not having the documents out front? It is regular order for us to receive all the documents, to receive all the documents that this committee is entitled to. Wow. <laughs> the RNC calculating Democrats interrupted over 60 times. And when they weren't doing that, Capitol Hill police arrested roughly two dozen demonstrators for rowdy disruptions like this. Alexander Hamilton wrote in the Federalist Papers. Mr. Chairman, could I uh, pause there until the room is cleared? Surely I would. Okay. Kavanaugh is one of the most distinguished judges. Mr. Chairman, I think we ought to have this, this loudmouth removed. If you followed the Kavanaugh saga from the beginning, you saw just how juvenile some of the tactics the opposition used became, and it only continued to degrade. Again, if you've been following this from the beginning and you want my personal opinion, it's hard to say that those on the fringes of the opposition to Brett, not the sensible opposition, have been doing anything less than childishly attempting to achieve petty resistance for the sake of resistance. 
But that is not to say the same goes for Miss Ford. While the timing is both interesting and perplexing, I agree with both sides that she does deserve to be heard. This will serve to show that neither side simply plugs their ears to these allegations or anything to that degree, while at the same time countering any suggestions to the contrary before they start. But why would any of this matter in the first place? Look, if all it takes is a 40-year-old admittedly hazy allegation based on a drunken recollection when you were 15 to determine key elements of politics, it starts to spell disaster. It's difficult not to see how such scandals wouldn't be sprung to achieve forms of leverage. That's my point here, and I think that's the important thing we need to look at. But, believe it or not, there is another angle to this, and it's worth mentioning as it gained some popularity even though it was apparently debunked by the arbiter of truth, Snopes. So, after finding out something interesting about Brett's mother, some think this may not have anything to do with high school, but a 1996 foreclosure case. As we read here from Snopes, Martha G. Kavanaugh, the mother of Brett Kavanaugh, was a Maryland district judge in 1996. And an amazing coincidence, Martha Kavanaugh was the judge in a foreclosure case in which Christine Blasey Ford's parents were the defendants. Now it all becomes clear. Blasey Ford is going after Brett Kavanaugh, not because of what he did in high school. Instead, Christine Blasey Ford is going after Brett Kavanaugh out of spite and revenge for a case ruled on by Brett Kavanaugh's mother. Martha Kavanaugh, Brett's mother, was Montgomery County Circuit Court judge from 1993 until she retired in 2001. During a 1996 foreclosure case, Martha Kavanaugh ruled against the parents of Christine Blasey Ford in a foreclosure case. Isn't it kind of amazing that all the media reports didn't mention this little conflict of interest for Blasey Ford? It goes on to say, These accounts got only the background facts right, while wildly misrepresenting the key details and amounting to a gross misrepresentation of what actually took place. Martha Kavanaugh did preside for certain parts of a 1996 foreclosure case in involving Ralph and Paula Blasey, who were indeed Christine Blasey Ford's parents. However, Kavanaugh actually ruled favorably toward the Blaseys, who ended up keeping their home. These two facts caused the logic of the conspiracy theory such as it was to collapse. Background, Maryland state land records show that Ralph and Paula Blasey purchased a home in Potomac, Maryland in June 1977. According to Montgomery County Circuit Court records, in August 1996, a company called UMLIC8 Corporation initiated foreclosure proceedings against the couple. However, by December of that year, the Blaseys were able to refinance the mortgage, and in January 1997, UMLIC filed a motion to dismiss their earlier petition. Judge Martha Kavanaugh granted that motion on 4 February 1997, thus formally bringing an end to the foreclosure proceedings against the Blaseys. The claim that Kavanaugh ruled against Ralph and Paula Blasey, central to the conspiracy theory about their daughter's sexual allegations, is therefore false. So says Snopes. Regardless, this is going to be one for the books. Let's just be careful with the precedent we allow this to set. Take care of yourselves out there.